Hey everybody and welcome back to Bigfoot Cooking where today we are making mashed potatoes and what to do with leftover mashed potatoes. That's right, not only are we going to show you how to turn these Yukon Golds into some awesome mashed potatoes, we're going to make potato cakes, potato sticks, and potato balls. Now to whip these things out for the potato cakes, all you're going to need are the mashed potatoes and some flour. For the sticks, well you just need mashed potatoes for those. But the potato balls, ooh, we're gonna make them a little fancy because we're gonna need the potatoes, we're gonna need some eggs, panko, and some sharp cheddar cheese because we are cheese stuffing these guys and frying them up good. So let's get started on, well, let's make the mashed potatoes first since that's kind of the first requirement for this whole event. Now, I know I said we were gonna use the potatoes from the last video, but they kind of got ate. You know, we got hungry folk around here. Now, to begin this process, just in case you didn't watch the other video, you gotta put holes in these guys, because if you don't, what happens is when you cook them, they actually build up a little pressure and they can kind of, not really explode, but split the skins and make a mess in your oven or microwave or whatever you're doing. In this case, we're gonna microwave these because it's a, it's a faster way to do it and we're just making mashed potatoes. So let's get to the, uh, to the stabbing of all these guys. Like I said before, you can do this with a fork, but with a knife, it's just a lot easier. You're not having to like hold it and actually murder the potato because you're not really trying to poke into it. You're just literally adding a place for the steam to come out of it. So now that we've got these guys done, we're gonna do the magic trick. A bag. That's right, all you have to do, in this case, we've got two and a half pounds of potatoes. Yes, I measured, and yes, I got it just about as close as you could with potatoes. You're gonna take these guys, we're gonna put them in the microwave. We're not gonna like do the twisty thing here. We're just gonna set them in the microwave, fold it over, and then we're gonna cook them. It's about seven minutes a pound, depending on your microwave. I'm gonna do these for about 13 minutes. That should put me about right. Let's see how it goes. All right, we have us uh, some hot, hot potatoes. Oh, look at that steam coming off of that. Ye old potato masher. That's right, sometimes old school works way, well, not way better, but it's just, it's easier. You ain't gotta plug it in or nothing. We're just gonna take this guy, mash these up. That's right, skins and all. We're gonna do everything on here. If you're partial to skins, peel them off. But me, just adds a little more to it. Now, let's get to some mushing. Now we're gonna take a whole stick of butter. If you want, you can use less, but for the flavor, you can't beat butter. Come on. It is, it is one of God's greatest inventions. I tell you what, we'll mash this in here. We got our butter fully mixed into it. Now that all the hot, hot, let's take a little bit of cold milk. I've got about a cup and a half here, but you may not need that. So we're gonna start out, we're gonna add about a half a cup the goal is to not have runny mashed potatoes, but nice, soft, luxurious potatoes. Let me get this slowly mixed so I don't splash. Look at that right there. That is the consistency of heaven. But we forgot something. Now that everything is mixed up right here, how do you want your potatoes to taste? Do you want to add a little garlic to it or? We're definitely gonna add some salt and pepper because without it, it's a little bland. But salt, pepper, garlic, onion, cheese, bacon, but whatever, this, this is like the casserole dish of the South. What do you want to go in here? Since we're making other stuff with these potatoes, that's why I'm keeping it simple. Just a, a good pinch of salt and of course, a little bit of, a little bit of pepper to make it delicious as well. That's probably, I don't know, quarter teaspoon of each. Mix these in. And lo and behold, you have made mashed potatoes. Now, from here, I'm gonna let these cool off because to make the other three things that we're doing today, well, I don't need hot, hot potatoes right off the bat because after all, this is a leftover recipe menu, not a, hey, make mashed potatoes and do it now. So let's let this sit for a couple of hours. And while this is going on, I almost hate to say this, while this is going on, Benson, our local Bigfoot says he has a joke for you guys. So take it away, Benson. Don't be nervous. This is your big debut. Oh, 
Hello, everybody. Um, is this thing on? Okay. Hi. Um, so today, I have a science joke for you. What is a duck bill made out of? Easy. There are four elements. There is hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and potassium. It's a science joke. Check it out. Honk, honk. <laughs> Goodbye. I think we killed it. Honk, honk. <sighs> At this rate, I'm never going to get monetized. All right. I'll check back with y'all in a little bit once this cools off. Well, we've given our potatoes enough time to finally cool off and get down to a good working handling temperature. What we're gonna do for the potato cakes, we're gonna start out, we've got mm, roughly two cups of potatoes-ish. I don't know, I just gotta grab enough that I thought, hey, we'll make four or five potato cakes. From there, we're gonna take one of our glorious little chicken eggs, got right from the pen just a few moments ago in the backyard, crack this guy open, and drop the whole thing in there. It's okay, it's okay. Enjoy a homemade, and you made it at home, right? Now the egg is gonna act as a little bit of a binder to hold together the thing while it's sitting there in the frying pan. We're gonna mix the egg into it and get it all nice and battery-like. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna dredge it in a little bit of flour. For the flour, I've added a pinch of salt and a little bit of pepper to it, but if you wanted to make like garlic flavored or sriracha, just any kind of little powder, go ahead and add it to that. Make this yours, add whatever flavor you like. So let me grab out about a baseball sized amount, maybe a little bit smaller, and we're gonna pat it out. But first, well, we have to flour the hands because the potatoes, think of this is like making biscuits now. The potato's gonna be a little bit sticky and well, I don't want it all over my hands. So we'll grab us up, uh, what do you think? That look about right? We're gonna work this out into a, a little bit of a patty here. Yeah, I think that'll work. We'll ease it right into the flour. And of course, this will take care of all the sticky because the flour sticks to the, the potatoes and keeps it from keeps it from just grabbing everything. And there we have it. One ornery yet delicious potato patty. Let's go ahead and get two more done. Now, the reason why I'm only doing three is one, I don't wanna overcrowd my frying pan and just have a bunch of these stacked up because if you get five, six, seven of these over here and you're not putting them right onto the frying pan, well, the moisture that's in the potatoes is gonna start coming out and it'll stick to the, it'll just, you'll have mashed potatoes again. So kind of work these in groups where you get just enough to go into the frying pan. So now let me wash up, change camera angles and show you what they look like a frying. All right, good old cast iron pot, right? I've got the oil to about 350, 370, somewhere in there. I just know it's really, really hot. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna ease these potato cakes in there. And oh, we gonna have with the goodness. That's right, come on, buddy. Scoop them up, ease that one in there. Turn him this away. There we go. See what I was talking about by not overcrowding the pan? If I'd have made another one, well, I wouldn't have had room for it and it'd have been just sitting over here getting soggy. Now we're gonna let this go for probably three or four minutes. I'm gonna clean up again and we'll check back on it. We should have a nice brown spot on the backside that's gonna be whew, crispy and delicious. Stand by. Tell you what, the best way to check on this stuff is with a little instant thermometer. These things are handy for just so much in the kitchen. I'll leave the link for this one I got down below, but man, when you need to make sure that things are just the right temperature and everything's going good, you can't beat an instant read thermometer just to make sure that you're not screwing up. Believe me. And it's easy to do in the kitchen, especially when you first start figuring out how to do all this stuff. Mistakes will be made. The thermometer will help smooth that out. All right, we got three or four minutes on it and you can see on the edges right here, they're starting to get a little bit brown. I think that's the sign we're looking for. Let's do a little grab and flip carefully so you don't splash oil. What do we have? Oh, look at that. That is a thing of beauty. Now we'll give them two or three minutes on this side. I'd say we're ready to slide these babies out, set them to the side. Now from here, I'm gonna go ahead and take the rest of my potatoes, 
and cook them up as well so that way we'll have a plate full of these i won't bore you with that though but once we get done with these oh then it's time for potato sticks and we're going to use a different pot for that so let me get this part done and let me show you what's next and there you have it six potato cakes not too shabby eh now to make those hold together better you can actually even go ahead and add some cornstarch to this recipe kind of like we're going to do with the rest of the potatoes because to make the straws and the the balls and stuff that we're going to need for the cheese balls it's got to have a little extra strength otherwise you put it in oil it's just it's going to disappear on you and disintegrate don't ask me how i know so to begin the process we take the rest of our mashed potatoes we're gonna take about, this is roughly three and a half tablespoons of cornstarch. Plop right on in there. And what this will do, this will help tighten this stuff up and make it almost like a dough. Instead of mashed potatoes, it's gonna be, well, you'll see. Let me mix this in. And you remember before how when I mixed it up and I grabbed a hold of it, it would stick to the fingers? Well now, with the, uh, the cornstarch in there, Oh, not too bad. You can almost play with it like Play-Doh. So we're gonna take from here, we're gonna get our oil hot in a wok because we're switching up from the cast iron to the wok. Reasons being the wok is actually less messy to cook in. Like when you fry because of the dome shape, all the splatter, it has to go further to make a bigger mess. So if you like keeping things clean, the wok is great for that. Now to make these fries, you can use a piping bag, which I can't seem to find. I think I know who borrowed my piping bag and didn't bring it back. Yes, I know who did it. But for the meantime, we're just gonna use the good old Ziploc, what, pint size, I don't know, this size bag. You don't need a gargantuan one, just a, a small bag. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna scoop up, oh, I don't know, a couple of things of potatoes, depending on how many you wanna make. And that's literally what you're up against too with this. You can put in here however many of the potato fries that you wanna make and stop there. Nobody says you have to do 100 or 50 or three. If you want one really good potato fry, just put enough in here to make one really good potato fry. Right, I'm gonna work with about this much potato. How much is it? Well, about this much. We're gonna mash the air out of the bag and close it. Just kind of mush it down, zip it up, and then pick whichever corner you wanna use and just trim the end of it off. Now. The bigger it is, the bigger your fry is gonna be. And remember, you can always trim a little bit and come back for a bigger one, but if you cut too much, well, you can't glue it back on. You gotta get another bag. So let's see, I'm gonna trim just a shade. We're gonna mash the air out, get it all prefaced, situated, and ready to go. Boop. And now, time for the walk. Time to turn the camera on. Okay, we got our oil right about 375, 400, somewhere in there. I got my potatoes locked, cocked, and ready to rock. I have a small hole here. We're gonna start, we're gonna do a couple different sizes. We're gonna start out with the itty bitty ones. So let's go ahead and make some small french fries. We'll just give it a squeeze and snip. Squeeze and snip. Let's see how this works. We'll do three of these guys here. We'll let them do their thing for a minute and see how these turn out. Make sure nobody's sticking to the sides or the bottom. Let's see, look how quick that is. Flip them over. This is kind of a neat little project. We'll pull these guys out. Like silly string, but fried. And there you go. <laughs> silly string, ready to eat. Now, of course, we're gonna drain it. You can either drain them over a rack, or in this case, I'm gonna put them on a paper towel. But let's have some more fun. I got lots more potato to mix up. I cut the hole a little bigger. Let's make a little bigger fry. Whee! Snip that guy. Snip that guy. And snip that guy. You know, if you were kind of handy, you could literally take and do little swirls and Make a face, make an emoji if you really wanted to be bold and daring. But I tell you what, the way they cook, it don't take long and they don't taste bad either. Not that I may have sampled one or two along the way. Now, like you see, I'm doing these just three at a time, but however many you're comfortable with, load that pan up. Let the pan do its work for you. 
And I'm gonna go ahead and make these one more time bigger. See if we can get some really fat ones. And of course, make sure you cut the bag where you're not over the oil. Wouldn't taste very good, no, no. Here we go, big boys. Oh, these guys are looking just right. I tell you what, look at there. Like I say, about the size of your fingers. Now, if you go that thick, it does take quite a bit longer to brown, because I'm not kidding, to, to do the little ones, we were done in under a minute. The middle, middle ones, eh, about a minute and a half. These guys took about four minutes to make good on both sides. But man, oh man. But wait, we got one more to go. That's right, cheese balls, and we're gonna use duck eggs to dip them in. Woo, didn't sell you about that, did I? Let's get back over there to them guys. <laughs> Man, these things turned out great. And I mean, got a little crunchy shell on the outside. Got that good potato flavor on the inside. Mm-mm-mm. You could dip that in like some ketchup and, oh wait a minute, that'd be french fries. But now, on to our last one. That's right, we we're doing a cheese filled potato ball with a duck egg and panko crust on the outside. Duck egg, oh yeah. Let me show you the difference. You might have met Quackers earlier. Quackers is an awesome duck. Now, my chickens out there are not bad chickens. However, egg size, well, oh, big difference. Not to mention there is a difference in the protein and well, just the overall flavor of a duck egg. So why not incorporate a little different flavor if you can? If you can't, use a chicken egg. So let's go ahead and crack our duck egg open here. They're a little bit harder to crack than a chicken egg. Whoop. And of course the yolk is way bigger. Well, the egg's bigger, what do you expect, right? Okay, we'll go ahead and take both eggs. We'll go ahead and split them both open and get them in here. That way I don't have to stop again. And well, if I have some duck eggs left over, I'll make some scrambled eggs. I mean, I've got the potatoes to go with it, so why not? Just give them a little whisk, whisk, whisk. See, they look just like chicken eggs, but they're not, they're duck eggs. Kind of like ostrich eggs. They look like chicken eggs, but way bigger. And like we've done before, we'll get us up a, uh, I don't know, what do you think? About that much? Nah. Yeah, we'll get us up about that much potato. Get us a piece of sharp cheddar. Now, the reason why I'm using sharp cheddar instead of something um, like a mild or whatever, it takes a little more to melt sharp cheddar than it does regular cheddar. And since we are putting these guys into the, into the oil, I don't want it to melt the cheese out of it. We'll take this, roll it around, get a little flour on it. Now from here, we'll drop it into our duck egg and drop it into the panko. Now, what's so special about panko? Well, it's Japanese breadcrumbs. If you don't have these, I guess you could get some out of the bottom of your toaster, but I don't think you'd want that. This has one flavor of crust, whereas your toaster, who knows what you're gonna get. One down, let's get about four or five of these ready before we put them into the hot oil. You know, the hardest part for me is when you're down to the last little bit, like with the panko here, I've got just enough, and I, I hate throwing away stuff, but you know, you got just that little bit of panko left and you don't want it to go to waste, but it's getting to be a little bit of a booger to get the, the ball nice and in there. And this is a pretty big freaking potato ball, but it should come out nicely now. Let me wash up, get the oil hot, and we're going to do some swimming pool exercises with these here tater balls. Lovely. Oil is up to temperature. Let's go ahead and take our potato balls. We'll start with the big boy here and ease them into the oil. I use the word ease loosely because uh, I ain't getting burned. Well. Looks like we're gonna have one that sits out. You don't wanna crowd the pan. 
We'll let these fry for a few minutes till they get a little crust on them and then flip them over. Tell you what, with that little bit of duck egg and panko on the outside, look how beautifully that turned out in less than a minute, realistically. And also, because of the cheese in the middle, you're not trying to cook this until you melt that cheese. You just want a nice crispy crust on the outside so you bite into it. Almost like a hush puppy, I guess you'd say. Ooh, oh yeah, look at there. Ready to come out and sit on a paper towel and dry off. That's right. You kids enjoyed the pool? Oh, it looks like they did. Like I said, we can't forget their distant cousin because this is the last one left. Ooh, into the frying pan. See, it don't take this long to cook it all. Kind of like it don't take you guys long to just click down there and hit that subscribe button. It, this will be done before you do that. Just, just even if you reach slowly and go, that's all it takes. And oh, that brings such joy to my heart. It'll even make the duck eggs happy for sacrificing their shells to make this glorious dish. You notice how the potato cakes, we had a little trouble flipping them over. They wanted to get loose. These guys, oh, they ain't got no problem staying together. Cornstarch, I'm telling you, it is the super glue of the cooking world. Between that and eggs, man, I think you could build a house out of this stuff if you wanted. All right, come on. You spent long enough in a sauna. Now, let's go ahead and get back over and stare at all of our different little tater creations we've made today. And there you guys go. What to do with leftover mashed potatoes. I mean, other than just eating them as mashed potatoes, you got potato cakes, potato fries, and potato balls. Guys, this is everything you could want in a potato. Now we're gonna take one of these potato balls that we got out. Last, as they're still a little warm, let's slice this guy open. Oh, I don't know if you can hear the crunch, but it's a crunchy. You got that big old nugget of cheese in there. Man, oh man, this right here, this is the snack I've been craving since we started, so. Pardon me while I nom nom it down. You know, it is a nice little crunch on the outside. Not to mention the potatoes wasn't too bad to start with. But don't forget, you guys can jazz this up however you want. Sriracha on the inside, some honey, I mean, garlic. Dude, it's mashed potatoes. Make them yours, make them delicious, and make them happy. Just like you do every time you recite the ending statement with me. Bigfoot is real. Mm, 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 mm. Y'all know he's real. Don't play with my heart. Then it's time for. Well, once we get done with these, oh, there you go. What to do with leftover mashed potatoes? I don't know other. I don't. <laughs> Hey everybody and welcome back to Bigfoot Cooking where today we're making things out of old mashed potatoes. No, that don't sound good. Old mashed potatoes. 